show. I am Chad Cook, your host. I'm with AUG B-Ball, and we have a great guest today in our first episode. His name is Marcus Shockley from BasketballElite.com, one of the experts in our field. And Marcus, welcome to the first episode. Hey, Chad. It's glad, I'm glad to be working with you again. I think uh, this is going to be a, a good experience for trying to bring some of that information maybe in video form. So That's right. And, and you mentioned the video. The Hoop Show is a, is a joint collaboration between the folks at BasketballElite.com and, and the folks at AUGBball.com. So let's get right to it. The Nike EYBL Finals at the Peach Jam is the final tournament of a five-tournament schedule. During those tournaments, 40 teams play a total of 20 games and the top 24 teams make it to the finals at the Peach Jam in North Augusta, South Carolina. Four teams make it to Sunday, those teams being the Oakland Soldiers, the CP3 All-Stars from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the Mocan Elite out of Kansas City, and the CIA Bounce out of Ontario, Canada. Now Marcus, what are some of the things that stood out to you most about the Peach Jam, and, and specifically those teams that made it so far? Well, one of the things about the Peach Jam is, and, and college coaches have told me this, and I agree with them, that it, it may be the best thing running as far as an organized structure for uh, AAU basketball. The fact is that a lot of the teams that make that Final Four, and even some of the teams that don't, have future professional basketball players on those teams. And the vast majority of players on those teams are going to be playing in college basketball at a Division One level. There's so many coaches, there's so much media, and it's that level, uh, Thad Mata, uh, John Calipari, several other high-profile coaches, Roy Williams, they are there to see and be seen by certain players, and that creates an atmosphere for those players where they, they play even harder. Yeah, and you know, you talk about the guys playing hard, and I just have to start with Andrew Wiggins from the CIA Mouse. Now, Andrew Wiggins was so impressive to me, starting with that Texas Titans game, continuing when he played when they played Team United, and, and, and then ending in the championship game. He always stepped up, guarded the best player on the other team. When he's not shooting, he's crashing the boards. He does all the little things. What are your um, your main takeaways from what? I'm sure many people call the most exciting player at the Peach Jam, Andrew Wiggins from the CIA Bound. I think a lot of times there's a lot of hype around players. You know, everybody wants to be, they say, oh, this guy's amazing. He's going to be a future lock. He's the number one lot lottery pick. And, you know, and, and that does remain to be seen. But the truth is, Wiggins is really good. And what specifically makes him so good is his first step. He has a pro level first step already as a junior in high school. And, and that's that's not an understatement. He is very hard to guard when he's when the, I guess the knock on him is has been w whether he's going to play it at, at his full ability throughout the entire game every game. But in the Peach Jam, he should when he he did play that way, especially against even in the final game. But that pro first step, combined with his length and athleticism, at six foot seven, and he's a perimeter player. Um, a lot of people will look at that and say, oh, he's already ready for the pros. And he's, he's got to get stronger. He's got to get more consistent. And he's still a kid, you know. But that is, he is, he's quite frankly not going to see a lot of people who are going to be able to guard him uh, until he gets to the pros. Oh, yeah. And, you know, he can shoot the basketball. You know, he catches and shoots. He, he gets into the mid-range and drills that little shot. And you mentioned his first step. The, my favorite thing about him is, you know, when he drive, he'll drive hard right and spin off that guy and finish. And so there's that, there's that third or fourth step that's pretty deadly too. Now speaking of being amazed with somebody, um, Aaron Gordon takes a backseat to nobody, right? Yeah, Gordon is another guy who, quite frankly, is just biding his time until he gets to the pros. And and I don't want to overhype these guys. I want to be clear that these guys have to do certain things, but the trajectory they're on is that pro game. And one of the things about Gordon is how integral he is to the success of his team. He's got a very thoughtful approach to the game. When he's in the game, he is the best decision maker on the floor. So if the if the ball goes through him, he'll find either the open player or he'll recognize when to shoot or score. And then on top of it, he's a six foot nine guy who can play multiple positions. And he's got the athleticism to play those multiple positions at any level. So um, it's easy to see why people are so hyped on Aaron Gordon. And he was playing injured and he was still often the best player out there. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Now, you talked about Gordon's decision making and Tyler Ennis, the point guard for CIA Bounce, 
you know, his composure, how deliberate he is coming off that screen and roll, making the right decisions. Not only would he knock down the jump shot when it was there, he would get to the basket, score with great body control. And also, he had the presence of mind to, for instance, at times feed a red-hot um, Xavier Ratham Mays. What do you think about CIA's point guard? He's a true combo guard. This is the thing. Uh, a lot of times combo guard is a kind of a code word for a shooting guard that isn't really a point guard. You know, he's just too short to play sh uh, shooting guard at the college level. But the case of Ennis, he's a true combo guard. Can run the team, and he's very uh, poised and can make those passes. It, it could be a floor general. So as you mentioned, he, he can shoot, he can score, he can burn teams. They can't play off of him. And then he can work to get his own shot. So he's a true combo guard, and I really like that about him. And speaking of um, guys that play off the ball and that are so effective, I was just very impressed by Stanley Johnson. Johnson, you know, you can see his skill level from up there. You can see him making the long shot, the, you know, the three-pointer. You can see him getting into the mid-range and scoring, and, and he's very active. He rebounds, he, score, he finishes at the rim, all those things. And so, you know, you can tell he's got some size, so you're thinking, oh, he's about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, and, and then you look in the, um, the book or you go down to the floor level and he's six foot seven. And that is obviously why he has, you know, the kind of uh, scholarship offers and the kind of interest that he has. So do you want to update our viewers on Stanley Johnson? He's an impact player on the Oakland Soldiers who's a 2014 player. So everybody else he's playing with for the most part is 2013, Aaron Gordon. And, and the other guys on there. So he's already a year younger than them. The reason that he looks, that, that you think he's a guard is because he understands how to move through that, those gaps in the zone, and he does a lot of work there, and he, can, he, he just plays really facing the basket. Uh, since, the, since the Peach Jam, uh, you know, the focus was on Aaron Gordon, but a lot of coaches are there, and they, they, they like what they saw. The same thing as you and I did, and uh, almost immediately I know he picked up offers from Florida and Oregon State. And, uh, and that's not the end of it. I mean, he'll, he'll see a lot more over the next year. But he's definitely a prospect. He's, you know, still got another year to go. And um, really exciting, really smart, and really understands what the defense is trying to do and how to exploit it. Moving to Xavier Ratham Mays, the, the first vision I have of him is him coming off that high ball screen. Xavier Ratham Mays is kind of like, uh, give me this much space and I'll make you pay. He's a pure shooter, right? Yeah, he is, and he's solid. I mean, solidly built as a guard. He's already got that collegiate size, and he proved that under pressure he can hit that shot. He's got a good-looking shot. Uh, a few times I watched him, he wasn't hitting, but that was not, uh, that's not the case overall. He's, he's a solid shooter, and he's also gotten a lot of interest. He already had some interest, but he's, he's picked up a lot since that, since that showing. And we talked about this at the top of the show, how these guys are going against the elite competition. Coaches love the idea that if you see a guy like like uh, Xavier come into a tournament like this and play against the best other players in the country and, and light them up sometimes, then they know he's going to be able to do that at the college level. And Jabari Bird, fine player for the Oakland Soldiers as well. Yeah, Bird is another guy that's that's got a lot of a lot of ceiling, uh, a lot of interest, and I think that uh, coaches uh, saw him probably because the Soldiers made it so deep and ended up winning it all that so many coaches got to see guys besides. Gordon. Now, there's more than the 17 and under division at the Peach Jam, and you know, uh, several years ago they added a 16 and under division. The final two teams in that in that 16 and under division were the Southern Stampede and the team Texas Titans. And the Southern Stampede has a little bit of a local flavor. They have some Augusta-based kids, players from all over the Southeast. And Team Texas Titans, the champion, they are very impressive. Those guys are actually predominantly rising sophomores. So they're playing, uh, by and large, against guys that are a year older. They were able to win the entire tournament. So Mickey Mitchell, King McClure, Tyler Davis, Samir Sahik, so say Jamabo, these guys are exceptional players, but somebody that really caught your eye, Marcus, the shooting guard from the Southern Stampede, Ahmed Hill, he's six foot four. He's a great athlete, he's a good shooter. Tell us a little bit about what you saw with Ahmed, what you like about Ahmed. One of the things about him previously is he was always a really good athlete. In the Peach Jam, specifically in that championship game, for a period, I think it looked like the, the Stampede were out of it. And Ahmed Hill, I hate to use a sports cliche, but he put the team on his back. It was He was the go-to guy for them, and he just seemed unguardable. And one of the reasons is he's become a lot more aggressive. He's starting to look for his shot. He has a great-looking shot, good high release, good form. 
He can shoot on the move. He can he can create his own shot. He can score going to the basket. He can shoot from deep. And, and in that game, he did everything. <laughs> he did it all. In that game, I was sitting right behind the stampede bench. And uh, several of the people who were there were just, you know, they'd never heard of, of Hill. And they were saying, oh, this guy is amazing. And they were, you know, picking up their phones and calling, hey, have you heard of this guy? You know, he, he's, he's, he looks like a superstar. I mean, has already gotten high major offers. Uh, I think Clemson had already offered in several other schools, Mercer. But um, at that point, it was obvious that even against the best team, you know, the best teams in the, in the country, he was a serious shooting guard. And uh, talking to Ahmed, he's a hard worker. Uh, he's a, he's got good length. At six foot four, uh, great size for a college shooting guard. Yeah, you know what I would add is uh, having the advantage of being in Augusta, where he lives and where he attends high school. You know, see a lot of him. He's extremely athletic and he's got a good solid body. And six foot four. Yeah, there are larger two guards, but when you mix a very very solid size like that with the athleticism. With the shooting ability, now you're very close to having the, the highest level type of guy that you can have at that age. And at one point in time, his coach, Michael Stokes, who's, who's as good as any AAU coach, if not better than any I know, he was not happy with Ahmed's uh, ability to, to, to create his own shot off the dribble and things like that. And Ahmed has worked ex extremely hard to address that. I saw him repeatedly during that tournament attack when nothing is obviously there. And with that athletic ability, with that improved ball handling, he, he got to the line frequently. He got to the line early. He made layups in transition early. I think the work ethic and the time in the gym has really paid off for him. And I think it's a great story to tell that you know, Ahmed Hill is not just a guy who plays on a Nike team that gets to go around the world and play against all the best. He's a guy that works really hard to get where he is. And just because I live in Augusta, Georgia, and I see that firsthand, I'm confident that the Stanley Johnsons, the Jabari Birds, the Tyler Ennises, all these guys we've talked about are similar because you don't get to that level without having an extremely good work ethic. Yeah, and I agree with that. Guys like Ahmed, they don't just show up and are that good. I mean, there is some some natural ability, but the work will pay off if you put it in. If you put it in now. Well, I've really enjoyed talking Peach Jam hoops with you. Before we get into your side, I'll, I'll say that all 100 Peach Jam games are available at peachjam.ihi.com. But before we close up, I'd like to talk about your service. What should the folks look for from you as far as uh, the website content, things like that? Well, basketballelite.com and is a is, we, we're basically two two uh, facets of basketball coverage. The first is a media outlet at basketballelite.com, and people can go there. And right now, you'll see notes from the Power Twenty Four. Uh, you can go back from last week and see the stuff we've put up about the Peach Jam, some of the stuff we've talked about today. And secondly, we have um, a college recruiting or a basketball recruiting service for colleges. We break it down like. From a high major five to a high major two to a low major three, meaning the level of impact that you'll have and where we think you'll fit in. And then we also have a ceiling rating. Uh, we feel like it's a revolutionary way of, of, of indicating where players are going to go. That's great. And we really appreciate, Marcus, you being with us. Be sure to join us next time on The Hoop Show.